this, yes. We feel like we're in a concert hall, don't we? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Uh, just, I only have one announcement, but I know that Becky has one too. So I'm going to have Becky come up first. We're going to talk a little bit about the noisy um, uh, heifer offering and, uh, and a goal that we have for 2024. But she's going to talk a little bit about what, how much money we raised for heifer in 2023 and what types of animals or things that we purchased um, for that. You ready? Her glasses. She needs her glasses. Got to have these if we want to read. All right. Is there, is there a microphone up here? You, maybe you can use the pulpit one. Just use the pulpit. Can you get up there? Oh, you don't even have your boot on anymore. Yay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So in 2023 for the Heifer Project, we raised $1,231.60. Woo! So and yay kids. The kids are such a big part of this project. So what we purchased was a heifer for $500, clean water for $300, a sheep for $120. We also or, um, purchased two garden seeds for $120. They're $60 each. Two honeybees. They're $30 each for $60. We purchased two. And then six flocks of chips. Those are $20 each, so $120. And then we have $11.60 left. So we wanted them to put that where it is most needed. So, Explain um, to them why we chose those things. And the reason we chose what we chose is because a heifer will reproduce. Also, you can get milk. So we, were, we looked at things that were going to um, be longevity items, things that would continue on and on. So um, that's... That's what we purchased. Yay. And so one thing that we, we, have, a, we have a goal that we're setting for ourselves. And um, when, when Becky and I sat down together and we were going over this list of all these animals and things that we can purchase, um, there was something on there. It's called the ark. And so I asked her, I said, Becky, what is the ark? And she said, because it, it's like $5,000. And I said, and she said, it, it's, it's where you fill the ark. So we think of, no, you know, the ark, Noah's ark. You, you, you fill the, the ark with two by two, so a, a two of every kind um, of probably everything that's on that list. And so um, we decided that, actually, I should say I decided. I decided it would be a great goal for us in 2024 to strive for that ark. Let's see if we can fill the ark. And so what we're going to do is we're going to um, kind of come up with some kind of measurement, whether, whether it's a, a, an ark, that looks like something that looks like an ark, and each animal represents a certain dollar value or whatever, and we continue so that we can see um, the progress and see how we're filling that ark um, towards that goal and see how, let's see how far we can get with it by the end of 2024. I think that that's a great goal. So with that, we're going to make a little bit more noise in our noisy offering in 2024. Instead of our, our Tupperware bowls, we're going to use tin bowls so that we can really hear that, that, that change hitting that, hitting that bucket. And, and then we'll just um, keep striving. And I'm going to have the kids get together with me and come up with something spectacular that Pastor will do if we meet the goal within reason. Pastor's not shaving her head or anything like that. But we will come up with something, something cool that we can, we can do um, to celebrate meeting that, that goal. So let's, let's strive for that in 2024 and filling the ark because um, Heifer Project is a very wonderful project um, for um, people in this country and around the world. And so let's, let's strive to, 
to feed people and to provide for, for folks in that way. And, and have a little fun with it too, you know, and see, see, what, see where we're going with it. So that's what I would like to see us do in, in 2024. So we're going to start today um, because we didn't get to do it last week. We will have another one probably next Sunday. So if you don't have enough change next Sunday, that's okay. But we're going to do it twice a month just for the sake of um, on the second and the fourth Sunday for the sake of um, trying to meet our goal. Okay? Thank you very much for everything you guys do for our church with missions and that. And also, we will also take dollars, tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds. We, we really um, are excited about doing this. Our church did fill in our uh, quite a few years back, but we can do it. So, thank you. Anything, any other announcements? All right. Then let's stand and join together in our opening Come to Worship song. Let's join our voices in singing Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Let's stand.
Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, of the priests who were 
in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of King Josiah, son of Amon of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of King Zedekiah, son of Josiah of Judah, until the captivity of Jerusalem in the fifth month. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow and to build and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. The word of the Lord came to me a second time, saying, What do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot tilted away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, Out of the north disaster shall break out on all the inhabitants of the land. For now I am calling all the tribes of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord, and they shall come, and all of them shall set their thrones at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, against all its surrounding walls and against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgments against them for all their wickedness in forsaking me. They have made offerings to other gods and worshipped the works of their own hands. But you, gird up your loins, stand up and tell them everything that I command you. Do not break down before them, for I will break you before them. And I, for my part, have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, says the Lord, deliver you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Um, we'll have our congregational contemporary song now.
Today's gospel reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went a little further, and he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of God in scripture, the word of God among us, the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Kira, how's it going? Give me shoes. You have beautiful shoes. Man, you're styling. You have dino you have a do you have dinosaur shoes too, don't you? Yeah, that's what I thought. You're just uh you're a fashionista. That's what you are. How's it going, boys? How's it going? Good? So I have a question. Do any of you know what um well what's this, first of all? A phone. It's a phone. It's a phone. Do you know what caller ID is? Tell me what caller ID is. Do you know what caller ID is? Pink. Caller ID can be pink if you set that. If you set that for pink, it can be. What, what's 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 caller ID for? Some of you older ones. Do you know what caller ID is? No. Tell tell them what caller ID is. It tells you who's calling. So, you know. God calls us. Did you know that God calls us sometimes? God calls us. God calls us to be nice to one another, right? God calls us to love each other. God calls us to make our beds in the morning. God calls us to be nice to mom and dad. Yeah, and to grandmas and grandpas. Does, does, God, does God ask us to be nice to our, our next door neighbor? Yes. Does God ask us to um, help pastor scoop snow? What do you think? I think I think so. My next door neighbor came over and helped me do that, and I'm so grateful. Yeah, it's so amazing. God God calls us to do lots of things, and I think you know sometimes God calls me. Did you know that? God calls me, and I can just I can just answer this. Oh, look at there. Look, it says, caller ID. It says, God is calling. Right there. God is calling. Here, I better answer it. Hello? God? Oh, I will. I'll tell him. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I will, I will, I will make sure I tell him. All right, thanks. All right, bye. Oh, wait, I love you too. All right, see, God calls. You want to know what he said? What? God told me to tell you that you are all good boys and girls and that God loves you very, very, very much. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. God told me to tell all of you, too, that God loves you so very much. God calls us to all kinds of things. And that's kind of cool, isn't it? Because God is our friend, right? God is our friend? Yeah, yeah God is our friend. Can we pray and thank Jesus for, for being our friend? Yeah. Shall we do that? Let's, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for always being our friend. Thank you for calling us to all kinds of things. Thank you for calling us when we are sad. Thank you for calling us when we're, when we're happy. 
Thank you for calling us when we're sick. And thank you for sending us to those who need us when they're sick. We pray all of these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. You want to get your snack? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Trace. All right. All right. Give me five, Callum. All right. Did you get one? You better get up here and get one. Come on, let's see what, do we, what we got here. All right, that looks like a good choice. Give me five, Callum. All right. Let's pray. Open wide the window of our spirits, O Lord, and fill us full of your light. Open wide the door of our hearts that we may receive and entertain you with all our powers of adoration and love. Amen. Okay, so for those of you who have your phones with you today, Get them out. Come on, go ahead. I give you permission to look at your phones and worship today. Get them out. Now take a long look at it and imagine that it's ringing and the name on the caller ID says, God is calling. What do you do? How do you respond? Do you immediately answer with a resounding, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening? Or do you hesitate and wonder why God might be calling you? Maybe you become anxious or, or fearful of what God might ask you. And hit the decline button. Go ahead and hold on to your phones for the next little while and let those images melt into you. Our scripture lessons this morning are related in that they both speak to God's calling. Throughout scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, there are numerous examples of God calling people into service for and with God. We know that God called Noah to build an ark because God was so overwhelmed with the sins of humans that God was about to bring a great flood upon the earth. But God saw in Noah his faithfulness to God. God called Abraham to move from the land that was well known and comfortable so that God could make Abraham into a great mission for the mission, into a great nation for the mission of redeeming God's people. In these two instances, God's people respond in faith, in faithful commitment to God's direction, and, and God brings many blessings upon them. It isn't that they didn't go through times of trial, for there were many obstacles along the way. But when God called them, they responded, God is calling. Will you answer? In the, in the gospel lesson, Simon, Andrew, James, and John respond without hesitation, just as Noah and Abraham. However, in our Old Testament scripture lesson today, we learn that God is calling Jeremiah, and it isn't quite the same. The people of Israel will be exiled from Jerusalem as an ultimate result of Judah's sin. 
God calls Jeremiah into prophetic ministry, which is to proclaim to the people of Jer Jerusalem that the kingdom of Judah will fall because of their sinful ways and the trouble that is erupting from the north. Jeremiah sees a vision in verse 13 of a pot boiling over from the north. This impending vision of trouble it, it is to learn, we will learn later in the book of Jeremiah, is the invasion of Jerusalem by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar from the north. God's call for Jeremiah is not one of joyful good news, but in, pro proclam in the proclamation for the disaster upon them. I don't know about you, but I don't really want to have to tell people that that's coming. I'm going to have to run for the hills if I do. The text begins with us learning of the lineage of Jeremiah. And that is intended, and by the way, Janet did an outstanding job pronouncing all those difficult names. The text begins with us learning of the lineage of Jeremiah that is intended to give perspective to who Jeremiah is and why the people should heed his prophetic, why the people should heed his prophetic message from God. We hear God tell Jeremiah that God knew him before he, he was even created him. And that before he was born, he was set apart for this mission as a prophet to the nations. Fol following, we hear Jeremiah resisting God's call with excuses. Ah, Lord, he says, I don't know how to speak because I'm only a boy. At the time Jeremiah received his call, he was probably a young man, maybe in his teens. Perhaps his, his resistance is coming from a place of inadequacy or inexperience. Maybe you recognize it. Ah, Lord, yeah, but. God is calling. Will you answer? None of us are immune to the yeah buts, to the yeah but response to God's calling. When I was first called into pastoral ministry, I ignored, I argued, I even told God that he must have dialed the wrong number. I didn't respond with a resounding yes, Lord, when I first received my calling. It was more than a year before I even acknowledged it out loud to myself, let alone to anyone else. I didn't think that there was any way that I knew enough to be God's messenger. God's call is not always easy. In fact, it usually isn't that easy at all. I came from a lifetime of accounting and financial analysis of spending my days in debits and credits, not writing papers or sermons every week. Answering God's call meant doing things that I didn't generally do, things I was afraid to do, things that I didn't think I was capable of doing. Going to seminary meant learning how to write write a paper using the proper citations of materials and bibliographies, and that was not easy to relearn at age 48 when I said yes to God. Saying yes to God meant I'd be writing a sermon every week and praying before, during, and after that the words that flow from my mind and my heart to the page are coming from our most gracious God for all that God wants me to say, and praying that what you hear fills your spirit and edifies your minds. That's hard. It was hard, because what if I fail? What if I'm not good at it? Throughout scripture, 
especially in the Old Testament, we hear about God calling his servants and their objections to the call. Jonah was willing to be thrown overboard in a raging storm on the waters to hide from God's call to go to Nineveh and was swallowed by a whale. But even there, he could not hide from God's calling. Moses checked out the burning bush, but then argued with God about why it just could not be him. No way, no how. There are five instances of Moses' objections to God's call. And in each one, God reminds him that God's own presence will be enough. To trust in God and let God do the heavy lifting. Jeremiah's objection is all too familiar as well. Why me? I'm not strong enough, brave enough, smart enough, experienced enough. And God says to each one of us that we are enough. We are who God wants. God calls. Will you answer? Jeremiah was predestined to be a bearer of God's words. We are all predestined to some calling. Not all of us are called to pastoral ministry. But you can be certain that we are all called. Our worship of God is definitely a part of our response to God's call, but we are not called to simply be pew dwellers, but to be indwellers with the spirit of the living God who engages us in God's own mission to the world, the redemption of the world. Sometimes our call is to serve at a soup kitchen when standing hurts our knees. We might be called to help someone learn to read when our own eyesight is failing us. We might be called to use our musical gifts for others inside and outside of the church, even when we are afraid to perform in front of others. Sometimes we are called to be a friend to someone that it is really, really difficult to be a friend to. Sometimes we are called to help with youth and kids' activities, even when we think that we don't have any good ideas to offer. Here is the thing. Answering God's call doesn't mean doing it all in our own efforts, but in participation with God and with each other. God doesn't call and then ask us to do any of it alone. By sending the Holy Spirit to us, each of us are given Jesus' own gifts for ministry that I preached about last week. We are given these gifts in accordance with and purposes for God's mission. Some of, some of us are gifted with prophecy, some shepherding, some service, some giving, some helping, some teaching, some encouraging, and so on. God has created each, each one of us to be participating members of the body of Jesus Christ, who himself prayed to the Father in the Garden of Gethsemane, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not what I want, but you, what you want. It was Jesus' highest calling to go to the cross to die for us. Jesus is God, but he is also a human being. He knew the pain that he would suffer, and as a human being, he did not want to suffer that. But he also knew that saying yes was for something so much greater than the suffering that he would bear and he participated with God in it. As those who are li the living temples of God, 
with God living on the inside of us by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, who lived our life, bore our pain, who gave us the Holy Spirit so that through us, by our participation together in his continued ministries, we can say, say, not my will, but yours be done. Saying, yes, Lord, may not be easy, but your phone is ringing. God is calling. Will you answer? In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are there any prayer concerns or God winks this morning that we need to lift up? Good morning. Um, a joy with a little sorrow added in. Um, we, I've mentioned before in church that Debbie Miller has uh, resigned as our church treasurer. And since she's here this morning, I'm going to embarrass her again and say, Debbie, your servitude and fiscal responsibility over the past 30 plus years is appreciated more than you could ever imagine, and we thank you for what you've done for the church. And in the same vein, since when Debbie stepped down, I had to take over, which is not a good thing. Uh, I am so happy, <laughs> I am so happy to announce that Lacey McCauley is our new church treasurer. So We, we look forward to what she'll bring to the church in her servitude. And uh, yeah, if you have a money issue anymore, don't talk to me. <laughs> Any others? I would just ask that you keep the Baldwin family in your prayers. Um, Ed and Beverly Baldwin were very good friends of my parents. And um, Ed passed away the night of the 11th, and Beverly passed away last Tuesday. So to lose two people, it's tough for those kids, and it's tough for their friends as they lose their um, friendships. Thank you. Um, the Hannah Circle just wants to thank everyone that made it out Wednesday night and supported our first baked potato and baked sweet potato bar. We learned we will have, we didn't run out, but it was close. We will have more sweet potatoes next time. Um, and then on a personal note, I haven't given anybody an update for a while and just wanted to let everyone know that I saw my cancer doctor on Thursday and I am still without cancer. Praise be to God. Are there any others? Good morning. Pastor, just a reminder, when the kids come back into the sanctuary, can we do our noisy offering? Oh. <laughs> yes, let's do it. I know you were so excited about God calling, but... I was. <laughs> that all planned out. I was like, oh, this is going to be a great children's message. I can't wait to get to it. And then I forgot all about it. All right. Thank okay. you. Yep. You might have to remind me again. <laughs> Any others? Thanks, Becky. <laughs> all right. Then let's go to the, to the Lord in prayer. God of a thousand voices, we yearn to hear your call when we lie down to sleep, when we rise to meet the sun, 
when we offer our industry, when we gather with family and friends. Speak to us once more, Lord of life, when we, when we mistake your call or dismiss it as a dream. Hem us in with your power and your might, that we may feel your hand leading us and your love guiding our way through Jesus Christ our Lord. O oh Lord, we pray for those who in our church who are continually in need of prayer for, in our church, in our community, and in our neighboring communities who are in need of healing and peace. Lord, we ask that you would wrap your arms of love around the Baldwin family as they lost two of their beloveds, Ed and Beverly, in the same week. Lord, we ask that you would comfort that family, that you would wrap your arms of warmth and love around them, reminding all those who mourn this day that you care for them, that you weep with them, and that you wipe their tears away. Lord, we pray for those in care centers and nursing homes. We pray that for those who are suffering um, from persecution or have had violent acts committed against them. Lord, we pray for those who are hungry and poor, those afflicted by illness. Lord, we pray for all of the ways that you comfort us and, and offer blessings to us even inside of the struggles. Lord, we are thankful, so thankful, for those in this congregation who are sharing their gifts, gifts for music, gifts for, for administration, and gifts for leadership. We thank you for Lacey saying yes to your call. Lord, we are thankful for our family and our friends, for laughter and for joy, for our baptism that reminds us of renewal and rebirth and the promise of resurrection. But most of all, Lord, we are thankful for your amazing love that makes all things new. For all of these that have been spoken and those that remain on our hearts, Lord, may all of these fill your loving arms of comfort holding them and your healing peace surrounding them as we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we will now have our, our, our offering. So bring your time, bring your talents, bring your service, bring your gifts, and bring your witness, because all of these are acceptable unto the Lord.
please join me in our offering prayer, and then I'll have the kiddos come forward. God of vision and courage, you call us to be your hands and feet in the world. In a world full of need, use our gifts and our offerings, our time and our talents, to bless those in need of your blessings. Through these gifts, may others come to see your grace and hear your call in their lives. Amen. You may be seated. We forgot to do noisy offering. You guys didn't remind me. All right. Everybody take a bucket. Take a bucket. Now, these make more noise, so we need to make noise. Ooh, I made a noise, ooh. Not that kind of noise. All right, you got it. Joyful noise. I forgot. All right, take all the do dollar bills out and put them in here first. Put, put your bills in there first, Kira. There you go. Yep, put all right. Nice job. everybody out there, Trace. Say thank you. Say God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Amen. All right, you can be seated.
Let's stand as we all join together in sharing our voices to God and singing Lord of the Dance, hymn 261. Hear these words of benediction and blessing. Listening for the voice of God does not come with ease. 
But that, too, is part of our calling. Go forth, taking time to listen for God's calling, and be not afraid to answer, Yes, Lord, for your servant is listening. And may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and always. And all God's children say, Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.